So hey there guys, I've just watched episode 12 of Parasite. It is a sad episode. And that's, that's pretty usual for me to have no glasses when the episode was bad or, or something like sad. But I mean, it's not like I cried, but uh, I... Uh, anyways, think... Oi. I already wanted to say thank you for watching and by buying stuff. So the reaction is in the description. Links are there. Go watch it and go back here if you want to listen to the discussion. And the discussion starts right now. It's not going to be a long discussion because technically there was almost nothing here to discuss except for people speaking and Kana's, uh, Kana Shinichi situation. So we start with the dream again, she has the same dream. And yeah, they kiss and love and love and love. And as I've said, she... I mean, I suppose some people might become very angry towards the girl because she acted reckless and stupid and when people when Shinichi was explaining to her, she actually encountered parasites. She actually has experience with that. She she knows that she's not sensing only that man. But she was blinded by feelings, by love, by like such strong love. I don't think Satomi loves Shinichi that much. How this girl loved him. So you have to give her that. You have to respect that. And just yes. I mean, uh, many of us, of many of us, at some point, experienced this like blinding love. Maybe not everyone, and not that strong at, as she had, but that's understandable. That's something that actually happens. You can be blinded. You can, be, like, you can literally not see what's in front of you. Uh, in those cases. And that was the perfect case. She knew it was dangerous. She knew it was all a lie. But she still believed in her in beautiful dream. And I, I gotta say... I don't feel like that she's stupid or negative. No, she was just a victim of her own feelings towards the man. It was sad. It's just remove Murano and they could have been living happily. <laughs> you know, but there was Murano... There is Murano, but there was Kana. And uh, unfortunately, this love triangle ended very bad for her. And fucking Parasite, they had quite a lot of build-up for this girl to die. I mean, from the very first episodes when she was showing her uh, senses towards Parasites, it, it yeah... There was some hints of something bad happening to her, but not like literal dying. So, yeah, so she saw the dream. She saw the... She has a handkerchief, I suppose, with hair. His hair. So she's actually... She was actually... Yeah, Super serious about it. And by the way, Mutsu or whatever his name, I mean, I feel bad for the guy as well because she was basically maybe not like exact mirror of Hana, of Kana, Shinichi situation, but simple situation, not simple, a similar situation. He also cared about her, and you can see that even though he's like this type of like bully, uh, not nice person. Like hooligan guy, but he still had real feelings. He was worried about her, and yeah, she was. He was. Um, what's it called? I forgot the very easy word. One sec. Jealous, she was jealous, and that's understandable. That's completely understandable. And he actually loved her. 
he failed that and she died but I mean they had time together so, so it's not like they had reasons to not go together anywhere anymore so I don't know that's difficult love is difficult so anyways just just yeah just want to tell that I feel towards that guy as well uh, and then we go to Shinichi and um, Migi speaking about the mayor election situation and Migi is impressed by wow we're we're actually improving we're adapting we're going further and further and uh, like yeah and he proposed that he may have this mayor guy and all the parasites group may may wanna you know find this way of them to uh, acquire a position when they somehow hide them feeding you know because uh, this high position high ranks they have information they have influence then they can change information that's going out in the public and for parasites that are creatures that are love really like to hide and really like to eat juicy humans uh, it's a uh, it's a very smart move and Miggy proposes that they're probably gonna like somehow adapt their feeding and make it half yeah the second possibility is that he wants to secure a safe haven and food source for parasites I don't exactly know how, but yeah, as Miggy said, you can, you can, at this position it's easier than just a single parasite trying to hide everything. Uh, but then again, whatever the mayor, the man who ended up being mayor in the end, uh, was saying, the, his uh, man nature uh, idea is right, and I don't know if, what's his real motives but I say that the program this his political program is quite good yeah, I wish he would fight corruption as well be an uproar here. so we have that and we know that in the end the, the man became a mayor Mm -hmm. Oh, and and can I actually can feel more, uh, can feel the number of parasites. Good. Now she cannot. <laughs> There's a funny moment of being like, like huge ass eye. <laughs> even even Shinichi, after he saw Migi so many so many times, he still gets like uh, jump scared by Migi. I mean, Miggy is still a nice guy, even though he still is interested in, in his survival and his interests. And it's not like he have like sympathy, as he said. Uh, but still, so they have a talk, and Chinichi tried to explain that you girl do not speak, you do, you don't run towards your senses, whatever you sense. It's dangerous. And she even said something about parasites. So there were there were there's there are rumors about them. I I don't think there was it was mentioned somewhere before. Maybe it was, but I missed it. But there is there there are rumors about that. And the guy was right behind the tree. He didn't get the wrong the right idea. And Shinichi decides because she's stubborn. She doesn't like want to hear it. Like, I feel you, you're my boy. I feel you. I want you to be with me. And I don't care about stuff. I feel you. It's just you. I mean, blinded, completely blinded. And he's like, okay, come to the place where we'll, we're going to have a discussion about it. And he tried to ask Migi to show himself. But Migi's like, I do not want to do that. I do not want to do that. Like they, uh, we don't have sympathy, la la. Poor girl, I'm looking at her life. I mean, she was a nice girl. 
not an ideal, but still, just why would you kill her? She has like plushy toys everywhere. Was good looking, good figure, everything, everything. And then yeah, she sits on the on her bed and feels Shinichi as she thinks. But here you go. Woman looking like she just ate a goddamn crocodile. Eyes are like that. And thank god she didn't kill her there. She was not hungry, I suppose. Man, I was struggling to find the stupid word hungry for so long during that scene. It's like ridiculous. Sometimes it's so difficult. I know a lot of words. And when I'm writing, I can use those words but when you're like watching something trying to understand the information trying to comment on it as well and to comprehend this all it's like yeah sometimes you can forget the fucking okay word you know it's ridiculous so they meet in an abandoned place shinichi slaps poor migi and yeah, Migi is sleeping in a deep state of sleep. And Shinichi tells the story. This is the first person. Except for... Mamoru. The guy with Parasite. Who actually heard the real story about him and Migi. And she did not believe him. She did not believe him. I mean... It's not like she didn't believe him, she didn't take it seriously, because she was hoping that she's gonna, he's gonna come and say like, oh, I actually love you, and and, and, yeah, and here's my dick, and, and everything like that. So yeah, the expectations were pretty different. Um, and of course, it's like, that's understandable. I actually had have this issue as well. When you expect something, to hear something, uh, and people start saying other stuff, you kind of like miss half of it because it was what? I was, I was not expecting that. You're thinking about You're like, start thinking more than you have. Um, that's normal. And she said, no, no, no. She didn't believe him, kind of. But as I've said, the man is extremely strong. He can jump high up. He can, like, lift her with one arm, I suppose. He can, like, break walls with people's bodies. As far as I understand, it was not Migi. He, like, ripped heart of this parasite with his left arm, not right arm, because Migi was protecting him. I mean, we're gonna re I'm going to rewatch it, but I feel like, yes. I feel like he did it with his normal arm. So he's exceptionally strong, and she and he could have showed her at least show her that you are a goddamn Superman. I mean, my parasite sleeps, but I'm super strong. Just look at that, you know. You see me jumping, and that means what? You don't come close to your senses, because this is dangerous. But I suppose it would not work. I mean, she was so blinded. You you can literally like. Transform into that horse, like stupid white horse face thing. And, and back, and she's like, I don't care, I'm still gonna go to you. And after this talk, she actually kind of developed the ability to send signals. And too much hair flying around. Right? And they wanted to speak again after that, and she's like, oh, and she goes like, oh, you're just um, speaking a like stupid crap just for me to get to, to get rid out of me, and because uh, cause, cause, cause you like this girl Mamoru, just tell me the truth, and nah, nah, nah. I mean, just blinded by feelings. Me, I mean, I'm looking at her, she's like, so nice, why would you kill her? I suppose you can kill everyone, every nice person, and I will still be saying that, but... I wonder how strong emotional impact it had on him, because the moment when she actually was harmed, and when he went... like, murdering, brutally murdering that parasite, 
<laughs> I don't think that Parasite was expecting that his evening dinner will end up in that way. He was extremely shocked, I suppose. And she stands, sees Shinichi and um, Murano, tries to send signals, but man doesn't feel the signals. He's a human being, but Miggy felt it, and he's like, whoa. And the guy felt it. <laughs> I mean, her ex-boyfriend or, or whatnot, and this is sad. I mean, he cares about her, but she doesn't care about him. And yeah, and her last words, I mean, actually her last words towards him were, excuse me, I'm sorry, so it's not like that bad, but still was not a very nice end. That female's kind of gone stronger, yeah, a signal, and she actually, I mean, she had no time to, to, to use that signal in plot of this anime, she was just brutally murdered the same episode, like 10 minutes after she developed the power, even even less. And what's nice, uh, that Miggy tells him that she has the power, and he tells Miggy that he actually told her about, about Miggy as well when he was sleeping, so it's good that they still have trust in their relationship, it's really good, especially considering that Miggy sometimes can actually feel the, not feel, but kind of read mind of Shinichi, like, I know what you're thinking, there was a case of that but still, it's good that they have trusts, I don't want them to to lose trust toward each other she won't turn against you, and he, he Miggy actually agrees to show himself to her, I suppose. And at that point, I can—I was kind of uh, worried that M Migi can actually use this opportunity to kill her. But thankfully not, they did not ruin Migi. Uh, and then, yeah, then this all starts. She, she makes a ring out of heart, uh, out of uh, his hair. And leaves phone and how? Jesus, this girl. She was just asking, "Please kill me in this episode, literally." And the snow starts falling, and yeah, she goes towards the place when she and Shinichi met. It it gets pretty. It gets pretty dark pretty soon, to be honest. And she's like, "Yes, this is my love." She, this is my love, and here you go, here's your love, eating a human. And you just asked for it, you just asked for it. She starts running away, and uh, yeah, boom. Here, I think. He hits her with a knife. I'm gonna rewatch right in the heart, I mean, they know where to aim. Fucker, fucker, fucker. Shinichi's angry. He's shocked at first. Miki handle the defense, and she's like, and Miki was not even literally like defense, and, and, and Shinichi ran. Miki barely was able to, to protect Shinichi's head. And yes, he uses his right, his left arm, normal arm, to rip the whole body of a man, get the heart, and throw him into the wall, and like, destroy the whole wall. Just imagine how much anger and power this man have. And heart in his arm, this is like extremely badass. Even Miggy's like, oof, impressive. That was wow. I wonder what detectives think about that. There was like actually a dead girl, a dead parasite, and a broken wall, and not just dead parasite, dead parasite with a hole in his body, and near him there was his heart lying. So someone killed it with like extreme brutality and anger. And you can literally kind of connect to that, you know. 
to Shinichi because the girl was killed and someone killed the parasite. I mean, we know the girl was killed by some blade-like objects. We know the parasite used those blade-like objects. They like to aim it hard. Um, and um, the parasite was killed. Not just killed. He was killed with extreme anger. So he was killed by someone who likes or who know this girl. And also this girl there's a writing shinichka on the wall you know so i feel like that might drop some shadows on shinichi will it i don't know but that might because as far as i know they know that he was there he found the body or something and they know about mother being killed by parasites. Um, they they even took the hair out of him. It didn't work, of course. But yeah, and poor ha poor Kana dies. At least she dies in the hand of a man she loved. Up until she died, but could have lived, my girl. Could have lived and like went with this blindness and find your other man it's not like you have to end your life like such a young and beautiful girl i mean this is super sad his mother was also killed by a parasite yeah and they noticed that he's very calm shinichi is very calm and they mentioned that there was like not just parasite was there. It was like dead body, like wrecked. The victim was killed by a parasite. But who killed the parasite? Something tore through his ribs, ground it out its heart. <laughs> Gouged out its heart. And slammed it against the wall with enough force to destroy the wall itself, people. It's like goddamn Hulk was there. No human can do that. There must have been at least one more parasite. No people, parasite don't do that. I mean, that dude. That dude. From the previous episode. That like super parasite. He can do that. Yeah, no problem. But... A normal parasites, I don't think their bodies, human bodies, have enough power for that. They're gonna be using their parasite head for that. And they're gonna be trying cutting the heart and not destroying the wall. I mean, just, just fucking look at this. Like, how ridiculously strong you can understand. Do you know how, 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 like, it's like this wide. Not white, but you know, it's wall. It's big wall. It's not like just some little tiny wall. It's extreme force. And Sanichi goes away. Yeah, everyone's crying, but he's not. And here's poor guy. I mean, I understand. I mean. And you can see his eyes are like dark from crying. I mean, poor guy loved the girl as well. Why couldn't you protect Kana? Because she was running away. Like, if, if she cannot, if she, if she don't want to be protected, you cannot protect her. Shinichi did his best. I mean, you just cannot blame the man. He did his best. He he went like to extreme measures to to prevent that but it still happened you know but I understand the guy as well because he knows that who else he can blame except for her because you cannot blame her already she's dead but yeah and he starts punching Shinichi, and Shinichi is not even evading. She do he doesn't even care about that. At some point, the guy screams, you're not human, and Shinichi answers with quite a strong power. 
goes offensive, like, yeah, what's wrong with you being so weak? La la la. But then he understands, this. okay, 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 well, it was a bit too harsh, and goes away, and poor guy, poor guy. Then Shinichi goes to the forest, thinks about maybe I'm actually not a human anymore, and like slaps his head on a tree, and he is like blood coming out, and no, it's still red. I mean, it definitely left a impact on the man, a psychological impact. Everything that happens to him. Him being murdered, his mother being murdered, uh, this poor girl being killed. I don't know how many more... I mean, there was a situation with uh, Hideo in the school, you know, when he entered the, the, the dark-ass hallway and with bodies around and he felt bad around about it. So he gets a lot of emotional trauma into this strong-ass body. And I don't know how it will go. And he's like smiling in the end. And the blood comes off his face. And, and he's punched like, and smiling. He goes crazy a bit. And this is the end. And that was one hell of an episode. Yeah. But at least, yeah, I mean, hmm. kind of was present in the previous episodes for quite a lot. I mean, she appeared in episode two or something briefly, but then there was like a big pause, and then she appeared again and was constantly here, constantly here. It's not like a main character, but she was a very noticeable one. And I'm gonna miss, miss her, that's for sure. So, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.